Hey everybody, we got off to a late start, but we're here now. We're just waiting for Maria and then we can get started. Hey Maria. Shout out to everybody's best friend out there. Hey Maria, how are you? Hey folks, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yes. Can you hear me? Is the audio okay? Audio good. Okay. Okay. Should we just get right into it? You want to wait a little bit? I think we should jump right in. We're a little late. I know. Uh, but that's what happens, you know. You roll with the punches in life. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. Oh, people are slowly coming in. All right, everybody, we're back again. Two lives in the same month. I feel like we're doing good. We're doing good because you know how I feel about Instagram and live and and letting people and talking to the people all the time. I'm like, hello. I need a break. But I think we're doing good. <laughs> We've been on a roll for sure. Mm -hmm. so last week we were talking about romantic relationships, but today we're going to be talking about building quality friendships. Oh, okay, that happens. You know what? Let me put on my D and D as yeah. as we speak. Let me do that right now. Sorry. Let me let me do that. But yeah, tonight we're going to be talking about building quality friendships, which is an important topic in this day and age because I feel like it's really hard to find a good homegirl. And of course, this conversation is going to be with Embrace Her Legacy's founder and CEO, Maria Melendez, aka our inspirational homegirl. So just remember, if you don't have any homegirls at home, you got one in Maria. You do. <laughs> I'm going to tell you like it is, not how it might be. So don't be mad. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> and just as a reminder, if you like our social media and our live shows, then you'll love our community for our young professional queens on our Patreon page. And that's where you'll get exclusive access to all things Embrace, like our ebook, personal development tools, and professional resources. And because it's the season of giving back, you know Thanksgiving is this week, you can join our Patreon page for free for seven days on Black Friday. Boom. Oh. Boom. Actually, I have a surprise for the people. They can start now. So from Tuesday, what's this? The 21st, 22nd? So there's 21st? So this is 21st until the end of the day on Black Friday. They can join for free and access all of our core, all of our content. So we got our e-work book, which is our breaking up with your inner saboteur, which is really dope. Mm -hmm. Covering like perfectionism, shame, just overcoming those feelings of not feeling good enough. Then we have the course, the breaking up with your inner saboteur course, mm -hmm. which is two hours of me teaching in and in, going in, teaching those type of subjects. And then our e-book, the 10 ways to get over fear and negative thinking. So all of that is available for the people them. If you need a homegirl to come, you know, slide in, in your journal with you and say, girl, let's get you together. Okay. Because honestly, sometimes you got to learn how to be your own best friend before you can be anybody else's best friend. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to learn how to be good to you before you treat other people how to be good to you. But I'm looking forward to talk about it. That is 100% true. So let's get started. So when you're looking for a friend, what are some qualities that you see when you're looking for a friend? Um, <laughs> it's funny because, girl, as you get older, <laughs> as we get older, it's so funny. When we were younger, I didn't really have qualities. As long as you, like, hung out with me, you know, you like to do the same things I do. You like because I used to, you know, be outside partying and club and all that. Those are my like prerequisites to be a friend. And I think that's the challenge that like, and I love to start, I talk to let people know like you're Gen Z. So you're in your twenties. You're just fresh out of college and stuff like that. I'm a millennial. I'm over, you know, I'm somewhere between the ages of 35 and 50. No, <laughs> I'm lying, but I'm 38, right? So um, I say that to say like, when you're young and a lot of our audience tends to be in that 20 20s range sometimes your friends um all they do is share the we went to school together you know what i'm saying oh we like the party we like to hang out blah 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 or you know we like to study but as you go i've gone over that term friend i take it seriously so for me 
Um, the first thing is I need you to be honest and reliable. I hate a liar. Woo, I hate a liar. So that's important to me. Somebody who has integrity, takes accountability for their actions, some has some sort of faith in God. Honestly, one of the big things right now is being trustworthy and won't spread my business. I think that's really, really important. And like, sometimes we don't understand how gossip works. So if you tell me something, Isis, and let's say it's a friend group, and let's say it's four of us in a friend. If you tell me, and then I go tell friend number three, that's gossip. If I didn't ask you what's going on with Isis, right? So that's really important. I, I look for that. Um, I, a very important for me, thing for me and my friend group is if I don't have to dim my light to be around you. I've had that before when I was younger that because of your insecurities, I used to try to dim my light or Maria thinks you all that. I'm like, you. let me tell you something. If you're going to be my friend, you got to be very uncomfortable with being in your own skin and not comparing yourself to me because my friends know I'm the friend that will show up to the brunch with a gown. Like, oh, that's Maria. She wore a gown. Like, you know, and my friends would be like, that's just her. And if you in your kicks, and you're fitted, you have to be very comfortable. Don't try to be like, oh, why are you in a gown? Why you got to do all that? Like, you have to know that I'm the friend that's going to show up to brunch in a gown because it's Tuesday. Like, that's just because, of, why are you in a gown? Because I felt like it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because today I felt like wearing a tutu. Today I felt like wearing a gown. And you have to be very okay with letting me do that and you doing your own thing. Um, yeah, and then friends who have their own goals and ambitions, um, like I said, I could do more than just party with you um, and tell me the truth, like what I need to hear, not what I always wanted. I think that's important. Like real friends challenge each other. If you're a friend that I can't challenge you or you can't challenge me. I remember one time, me, this is last year, me and a group of my family, my friends, we were out at this, at this uh, like bar lounge. It was Memorial Day weekend. And this girl, she got so irate with the bartender. Like she ended up throwing a bottle at her and her friends were egging her on. And me and my friends looked at each other like, girl, I would never let you embarrass yourself like that. That's what I mean. Like, just like it, because she was acting out right for no reason and all this other stuff. So that's something that's important to me, like making sure that you can hold me accountable to my actions and to my values and say, Maria, you know, you, 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 you do better than that. So what about you? What about yourself? I feel like it is kind of similar, but it is a bit different just based off the age group and the expectations, I guess, that we have for one another. But for sure, this day and age of social media, things are to travel. So equality is trustworthiness, just making sure that you're not telling your business 50%. Um, also, even though I'm pretty active on social media, when I'm with friends, it's like sometimes I don't want to be posted or, you know, along those lines, like I don't want to be posted or I don't want people knowing exactly where we are at, exactly at the time that you're there. And I feel like that's something that I do struggle with now with people that, I wouldn't even call them friends. I would call them like homegirls or somebody uh -huh. to hang out with. It's just like, you know, like, let's enjoy this time together. Um, somebody that makes it easy to talk to because I feel like I'm always the listener and I don't really get the opportunity to talk. So it's like, okay, if I feel comfortable in that space, then I'll open up. Um, somebody that I do not have to parent because I feel like sometimes when pe people gravitate towards you, it can turn into a friendship, but sometimes it ends up being a little bit one-sided and toxic because they're taking and they're taking, but it's just like, okay, I don't have that much to give, mm -hmm. but it's not very mutual. So somebody that can create a mutual connection and somebody that's fun that does want to go out because I'm in my, I want to go out era. Like let's mm -hmm. go to the restaurant. Like I'm old enough to drink now. Like, oh, like, let's go get a lemon drop, like, you know? That's what I'm enjoying at the current moment. Or like double dates, like that's, I'm enjoying that as well. So people that are open to experiencing new things, traveling and stuff like that. I feel like as long as you lead with integrity mm -hmm. and you have a good head on your shoulders, then we can start a friendship from there. But I don't like to put too many, you know, things down on my list because everybody's different. So I kind of have to see who you are and evaluate, okay, can you hang with me? Yeah. Boom. I love that. I love that. Yeah. Can you hang with me? And I love that idea how you said that I can have fun with. Like, ah, that's important to me. Like, you can't be a prude. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't be somebody. I need to feel like I can 
and I can be my full authentic self. Mm -hmm. Like there's certain rooms, especially because of the mantle with embrace and what I do, what I carry, where I will always not necessarily be on, but I'm very conscious of that. I'm very um, conscious of what God has called me to steward with this role. So there are certain rooms where I don't, when I'm in a room where I'm being the CEO, I don't feel like I can always be vulnerable mm -hmm. to a certain degree. So with my friends, it's a really good time to kick back, sit on the couch and ha ha kiki that then they know me from 20 years ago and I can be full authentically me. That means, that means a lot to me as well. Like we could ha ha kiki, we could go out and we could just have a good time and be girlfriends and let our hair down. Mm -hmm. So you basically mapped out to me a good way to start friendship. But has there ever been a friendship that ended in a way that you didn't expect it to? Okay. I think we've all had that, right? Mm -hmm. um, and as I've grown older, I think for me, I just realized sometimes we just grow out of people in seasons and that's part of the game of life, you know? Um, we, people, we just grow apart. Have I had any, like, horrible, like, friendship ends no nothing horrible it's just literally drifting apart and i'm okay with that you know sometimes when our seasons change in life your friend group is going to change too the girls i'm hanging like the people i call friend in 2023 are not the same well some of them are <laughs> the same people i was calling friend in 2013 mm -hmm. some of them are the same people i was calling friend in 2003 and some of them are not you get what I'm saying? Um, the, you know, so especially as you evolve, as you change. So let's say you in the season right now where you are the party girl. You outside and you trap. And there's nothing wrong with that. I don't want to say the party girl. There's something with the sound. I keep hearing that echo. Um, let me see if, I, okay, I have to move my phone. I know what that was. So in that instance, let's say you're in a season right now where you're partying and all that other stuff and, Maybe in five years, you're home with your children and that's not who you are no more. Come to your friends from your party years may not understand that. So that's, that's what I mean. Um, yeah, that's exactly what I mean. So. No, I get it. What about you? Have you had a friend that ended, you know? I've had a friendship end in that regard. Like, we kind of grew out of each other but it wasn't in a bad way it was more so like she had different things going on in her home life and I just had different things going on that I was like super focused on and I felt like she wanted the space mm -hmm. because you know when you're going through things at home you know things change you're not like oh my gosh home girl I was just like no like to myself and I was trying to be as understanding as possible but you know when you're young you, you're not very emotionally receptive so it was like okay you're going through this I want to be your friend still. She's just like, well, I need some space. And I was just like, okay. And I gave her space. Right. All, all okay. the space. And we just never really spoke ever again. Like, and it was not intentional. Mm -hmm. I really understood where I went wrong. Like looking back, mm -hmm. like how I could have been more supportive. But that was definitely a friendship that ended like not definitely not how I expected. And then I've had friendships end like in a very bad way, just because like. They were talking about me and I thought that we were cool and we really weren't or we were hanging out and when we were together it was like, Oh my gosh, haha Kiki and it was like mm -hmm. when they turned Yeah, because existing this is mm -hmm. now. that's why I'm very selective with my friends nowadays because it's just like I wouldn't do that to anyone. I don't like what yeah. yeah, like so it's like for me it's just like but why? It's like you choose who you are friends with, so it's like you didn't have to choose to be my friend, right. you know? Right, right, right. And I think that happens a lot more. I know we're going to get into this, but let me tell you, trust your gut when it comes to people. Trust your gut when it comes to people. And I'm learning that more and more. I really didn't learn to trust my gut instinct about people until I got older. I'm like, let me put space between you and that person. As soon as I see something about somebody, I'm like, yeah, no. <laughs> I, I, I can't let you... Like, you could be a homie, but I can't let you in my mm -hmm. inner circle, okay? So I think, too, so we got to let our viewers know, like, listen, it's okay. Not every friendship is going to be for the whole life. For the, you know, some people come in your life, like they say, for reasons, seasons, and lifetimes. And you also got to know when that season is, o o like, over. Because one of the challenging things is, like, sometimes you're not being promoted to your next season because you're holding on to relationships from your previous season and they will tarnish 
the new things that God has for you. So I think it's important to know, like, hey, girl, if you feel them signs, let them people go. It might be hard. You might be lonely, mm -hmm. but it may be time to move, move forward. I do have a question in regard to that. Friendships, you know, when you lose that hunger, it be hurting the heart mm -hmm. bad. So do you feel like friendship breakups are worse than romantic breakups? They can be. Um, I haven't had one because for me, my romantic breakups are harder because my, roman my, my romantic partner becomes my most best and intimate friend. So that is like the dagger when you have to when i have to break up with my best friend right for me my romantic partner becomes my he has to be my best friend he is my best friend like he becomes my best friend so for me it's harder to it's like damn <laughs> i don't have nobody to call and be like hey you know as i've gotten older my romantic partner when i was younger then it was different you know my my, my girlfriends would get the first call my cousins or something now it's 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 the guy so now if in the case that i've noticed that the trend that i've had what's been difficult for me in my instances um is harder the romantic breakup and what makes it so hard is like dang it i'm losing my best friend um but i know that friendship breakups can be really tough but i haven't had anything that's like i was like crying over or heartbroken i'd be hurt about it like damn but I again seasons. I'm like, well, that season has come to an end. And if the season is circled back, I've had friends where we we fell out for a couple of years and we came back together. So I kind of like. I remember one of my good girlfriends. We went through that. That hurt. But again, it wasn't like like a dagger. It was like, damn, that hurt. But you know, I'm really good at. If the season is over, letting that season be over. Mm -hmm. Very good at it. I've learned to be very good at it as I've grown older. What about you? For me, I feel like a lot of my friendship breakups have been younger. Like, mm -hmm. when I'm a lot younger, like, high school. And it's, like, me still figuring out who I am. Everybody around me still trying to figure out who they mm -hmm. are. So for me, I wasn't really getting into romantic relationships in high school. Mm -hmm. So it was, like, it felt detrimental to me. Like, I had one friend, we fell off in our senior year, and we stopped being friends for, like, maybe two and a half years, mm -hmm. and randomly, we got back, and we're still friends to this day, like, I, I went to her baby shower, like, you know, we're cool, but that one was hard, I won't say that I was heartbroken, no, no, I won't say that I was heartbroken, but it did hurt a lot, because mm -hmm. it was a situation where it's like, I feel like you're not believing me as your mm -hmm. friend, There's so many outside opinions but it's like i'm telling you the truth and you're not honoring my truth mm -hmm. so it just became like how do you see me or like what is your idea of me in your mind if i can tell you this and it's just like going right over your head got it so like friendship breakups at that point in my life were a lot mm -hmm. harder now because my partner at the current moment is my best friend mm -hmm. exactly like you said when something good happens to me, babe, uh -huh, uh -huh. I, I feel like now they wouldn't hurt as bad, especially because I can pinpoint, okay, I see where we went uh -huh. wrong, or I see uh -huh. how this came to an end. Got I'm okay. It. Got it. So, got it. Got it. I totally understand. Got it. Yeah. Um, This is good. I never talked about, like, my friendships on online i noticed that this is my first time i've talked about relationships well but this is my first time really digging into like my close friend group so this is good <laughs> it is it's very interesting i've never done this either <laughs> neither, right i do have a question it's a little bit of some tea to spill mm -hmm. have you ever had a frenemy and if you've had like what is the dynamic of the relationship that you guys had um i've always let me tell you I have grown up, when you grow up as like the, and I'm going to toot my home with, thank you to my daddy, my earthly daddy and my heavenly daddy. Like I always grew up fly. Mm -hmm. So like my dad always made sure I had like the latest Jordans. I had long hair, I had a gold cap in my mouth at nine. I was fly. And when you, and you know, in our communities that can bring hate. 
so I never had frenemies per se, but I definitely knew I had people in my circles who were haters and I couldn't trust. And I was good at that from young. And like, and I say, I started recognizing I can't trust that person. I can't talk to that person. And um, I knew they would talk about me behind my back. My whole thing is if you can spill somebody else's tea to me that you call your homegirl, your friend, you're going to do it to me too. So not frenemies, but definitely people I wouldn't trust. And they probably, they probably think we friends. And I'm like, no, we're not. <laughs> like, you know, you was just my homegirl. Um, and, and now I don't let people like that close to me. If I have one inkling and I can't trust you, I keep, I'm very good at, um, controlling my relationships and putting people in circles. Like, no, I can't trust that person. No, um, I don't have any tolerance for that in my life anymore. When I was younger, maybe. And again, I wouldn't trust my instinct about people, but yeah, I've always had people around me who I knew was haters. They may not have said it to my face, but I heard such and such say, or said rumors, I'm Maria this, Maria that. But um, yeah, or would try to do underhanded compliments, you know, like those type of things, you know, and I'm like, girl, you ain't nothing but a hater. That's your war with you, the war that you were in inside of yourself. You're trying to bring that on to me. So yes, I have that. Now I don't let that, I don't even have, I don't let people like that close to me. <laughs> like I don't even, I have zero tolerance for that type of stuff. Um, now as I've gotten older, what about you? For me, I would, I guess you could call it a friend of me. It was a point in my life where I had a friend and, you know, you confide in your friends. And it was a very, like, uh -huh. bad space that I was in. And it was like, I want somebody to talk to. Like, I want to explain how I feel about these situations. And they were open to listening. But then we were in high school at the time. So it was like, after a while, my other friends were like, oh, um, what's going on with this situation? It's just like, I never told you about that. So uh -huh. I never you about that. The only person I told is this one particular friend. Uh -huh. like, well, why is it getting back out to people? And I'm to this day, I'm not even sure if it was with malicious intent or not. But uh -huh. it was more so for me. I'm big on my business is my business, and if I tell it to you, then it's our business, and it shouldn't right. be getting out to anybody else unless I say, "Oh, yeah, you can share it with people if you have to, or whatever the case may be." But that was something that just turned me off, and I feel like that's why it's kind of hard to open up to people at first because like, you know my business is my business and i'm very private even though i'm a social media girl some things you just keep private and it was just like that that really hurt because i was like i would never do that to you so i was like why did you do that so i wouldn't call it a friend of me but it was definitely like okay and i felt like that was always something that happened even if it wasn't a bad thing i was telling her something good that happened to me uh -huh. like everybody all of a sudden knows and it's just like well, I didn't want to share that with everybody. I wanted to share it with you. So I feel like that was our, in our relationship. It was like, I'm telling you anything and it's getting back to somebody. Else. It's just like, well, I can tell you I had this for dinner. Like, are you going to tell them too? Like, it just it got awkward for me. So then I just had to cut it off. I'm like, hey, like, you know, I adore you. You my girl, but uh -huh. And then we just stopped talking. You know what? That's so funny about the social media thing because one of my good girlfriends we talk about this all the time me and her will be sitting next to each other at the same event we won't post one another or we'll be referring to each other we won't tag each other it is hilarious and it's just like because one thing we've learned that we she said this recently she was like yo people are nosy you know what i'm saying and like people are nosy very nosy and i didn't know how nosy people were until i noticed how nosy people were was that did that make sense and it's funny because i think in this day of social media a lot of times we see people and we think oh such and such is cool such and such just because they post it and it's like not necessarily so and then two is like as my friend i need to be able to trust that you're not gonna post everything that we that would be a that would be a nuisance for me if you're posted everywhere we're doing where we going next time. and one thing you said when we're at this while we're at, like if you're posting that we're on i don't know the corner of 145th and broadway when we're on the corner of 145th and broadway yeah. like no don't do that <laughs> like you know wait like, till we like like 20 minutes out or something come like, on like come on like hello and my safety's involved too yeah. so i i get that so much like don't be posting my business on the social of the media as well. Don't post if we together. Like the world does not need to know right now 
that like I said, we're at, we're on the corner of 140 from Broadway. Let's wait until we at least 30 minutes out. And I don't mind us posting that we're out. I think like the location thing, yeah. Yeah. like it's like so you can post at the dinner table but don't yes tell them where don't at. don't put don't tell people where we at now honey like let's use that street smarts <laughs> like you know be street smart so that's that's big for me mm -hmm. this is a question that i really wanted to ask you because i wanted your input on it mm -hmm. how do you feel about friends that ask for advice but they don't take it but before isis i'm gonna keep it very honest it used to bother me now that's none of my business. Okay. But, but I will add, I'll offer advice one time, right? Mm -hmm. I remember one of my girlfriends, she was going through something, this was years ago. I was like, this is the last time I'm going to tell you because I know you're going to do what you want to do. What you do with this advice is on you. And sometimes people have to learn the hard way. You know, I've just come to that conclusion. Like, I could tell you, girl, don't deal with him. Girl, don't call him. Girl, stop following him on social media. Mm -hmm. All of those type of things, and you're not going to do it. So I'm like, you know what? That's on you, but what I will do is I'll set boundaries on on what you come in and ask advice for. So let's say in a situation, hypothetically speaking, you tell me a situation, I'm like, Isis, stop following him on social media, stop doing this. And now you keep coming back to me, telling me the same ways you're being triggered. Sometimes we allowing ourselves to be triggered. Stop following. And if you're not taking that advice, you know what you're not going to do? You're not going to jump on me. That's been the issue with me. It's like sometimes we think being a, a big, a good friend <clears throat> is listening to all of our friends' problems all the time. No, we have to also learn how to put boundaries on that. Like, baby girl, I told you, you got five minutes on this phone, and I'm sorry that that happened to you, but it, I have to protect my emotional mental health too, right? So I think, right, before you used to hurt me, and not even hurt me, before you should like, you know bother me now it's like okay i'm gonna tell you one two however many times after what you do after that is between you and god and yourself right it's none of my business and if you continue then i'm gonna have to put boundaries and you know really express like hey yo i love you but you know i can't support you through that i told you what to do and you may have to you know you may have to talk to someone else like i love you boo but i told you <laughs> and you don't want to listen <laughs> so i don't know what to say and if I can't talk to you like this as my friend, then we can't be friends. <laughs> That's how I feel. What about you? For me, um, to be fair, I'm like the therapist of the group, or like mm -hmm. the mediator of the group. So it's like I'm constantly getting, like I told you, I'm a listener. So people are constantly coming to me. What do I do? He mm -hmm. said this. This is a situation. Help. I don't have a problem giving advice. But it falls back to that same thing. It's like, if you keep asking me for advice for the same exact thing, it's just going to be like, well, I'm going to tell you the same thing. So it's like, what else do you want me to tell you? Or like, mm -hmm. what can I give if I'm giving you the best that I got and it's not, if you're not taking it? So I found before I would just keep giving the same advice, giving the same advice. But now that I'm getting a little bit older, maybe my patients are get, getting a little low. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell them, you know, I've told you on occasions like in this type of situation this is what you should do i really only have female friends so you're a grown woman do what you think would be best i can't give you any more advice than what i've been giving you mm -hmm. and i really don't want to keep having these conversations and that's the hard part for me because i don't want to do that which is like i've told a friend before like i really don't want to keep having these conversations because i hate to hear that you're going through this but it's like you're putting yourself through it so and they were they were like oh like wow like why would you say that like mm -hmm. but then it came down to like okay well let me try to take her advice now they were like oh it worked i'm like okay i'm not gonna say i told you so girl mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. but i feel like you really do have to protect your peace because it'll rack your brain because of course you care about your friend you don't want them yeah. to girl listen to me please because like, you can't rack your brain about stuff like that you have to let them figure it out on their own some of my friends they're the type of people that they need to have the bad thing happen to them or the consequence come up about for them to really learn and i'm like you know what if that's how how it needs to happen then let it happen that way it sucks but you won't do it again i bet you not <laughs> i bet you not and sometimes you have to recognize that too as a friend when to back off i remember there was a, i was in a really uh, bad like toxic 
uh, situation, relationship. This is like college years, right? And um, I had to walk through that. Like, and it's funny because I found when you let people walk through that, how can I say the people who let me be me, I would confide more in them than the people who were like, you need to do this and you need to do that and you need to do that. And the people who would just like walk me through it, they they were able to talk more into me than the people that were like trying to judge me and tell me what to do. So you have to use wisdom and discernment like that. Like sometimes you don't have to put your therapy hat on and sometimes you like, you just have to like remove the judgment and say, you know what, girl, like I, some like that person knows it's a bad idea to go to that person's house at two o'clock in the morning again. You don't need to remind that of that. Remind them of that all the time. Trust me, they already know. But sometimes the best thing you can do as a friend is like, girl, you grown, you making your decisions. I'm here if you need me. That's it, like, girl, you grown, I'm here if you need me. And she's gonna learn, she's gonna make her mistakes. And trust me, when that situation, when she finally realizes like she shouldn't be going over there to whatever, two o'clock in the morning, whatever her issue is, she'll circle back um, and, 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 you know, let you in on whatever it is that she, she needs her, your advice or your help on. Mm -hmm. um, earlier in the conversation, you had mentioned that like, you have friends from like 2013 that you're still cool and close with to this day. Mm -hmm. So do you really feel like friendships can last forever? Oh God, I feel like they can. They may not always, and that's fine, right? Um, I do. You have to be willing to evolve with me, right? Um, I'm not obviously the same woman I was in 2013. I've evolved and my friends have either evolved with me or allowed me to evolve, right? Um, and that means a lot to me. Um, for, 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 I think for, for friendships to last a long time, you have to manage your expectations. So like I said, let's say at 21, y'all was outside Y'all was partying, y'all were clubbing, y'all were traveling, doing all the girls' trips. And maybe 10 years later, maybe one of y'all is married with two kids. That may not be your lifestyle anymore. Your friend who's going to be in your life for a lifetime understands that and supports that, supports you through that. I can admit that when those type of life changes started happening in my friend group, I may not have always been as understanding as I could have been because I didn't understand, you know, all I know is I'm like, we're 25. I'm not going home to a husband. Like I didn't think like that. Now I definitely think like that. I know we're going to talk to we'll talk about that in a second. I'm ditching my home girl for my man on site. <laughs> like I'm like, Oh no, nah, I'm going home. Like on any day, like I can always see y'all. Nah, he, he gets first, first dibs, but um, when we were younger, we didn't understand, you know, when you're younger, you don't understand life changes like that. And, and because of those reasons, friendships can kind of fall out or it may be a, a turning point or a shift in a relationship, like, you know, so now I, I think the important thing for, for friendships to last a lifetime is you have to be willing to evolve and um, I guess metamorphosize with your friends as they too, or at least respect them. For where they are maybe you are still outside ha ha kiki and party and traveling don't impose that on your homegirl make her feel bad like well you used to be so much fun no she got two kids a mortgage and a husband she's she, 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 her, her priorities have changed so like just i would say just be there for them and for each other as as the lifestyle change you know and then if you are the friend who has um, the children and whatever like I've had people say underhanded comments to me oh well you don't have anything going on I'm like excuse me I didn't know that because I didn't have kids and you know a husband and I'm just supposed to be free all the time or the opposite like you're supposed to know everything that's popping because you're, you don't have a husband I'm like excuse me I like to be home too so I think you just have to respect where each other are in your seasons of your life in order for those relationships to grow and then to don't expect expect people to change don't hold me to the same woman i was in 2013 or 2003 or five years ago or last year because i'm constantly involved evolving do you think friendships can last a lifetime i feel like friends
friendships can last a lifetime, but only if you're both willing to do the work. Because mm -hmm. just like a relationship, friendships are hard work. Like, like when you're in a romantic relationship, how you try to keep things fun, you try to keep things fresh. It's kind of mm -hmm. like the same thing with the friendship because as those seasons change, the things that you agree on, or I guess you can say, like, mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess you could say the things that you agree on, the things you have in common, they change. So it's like, okay, well, how can we still keep our friendship alive? So that's something that I've been definitely trying to work on just because my 15-year-old self versus my 22-year-old self are two completely different people. And it's the I have friends from that age to now. And the way that we, okay, I used to see you every day, but now it's like, all right, I'm going to see you in three months. <laughs> and... That's just the life of an adult and it, it took me a long time to be like well why can't they make time for me like how they it's just because they don't have the time to make and when they do they'll make it so that's something that i'm figuring out like i said before like i'm enjoying the i'm going out i'm trying new food, I'm going to the restaurants i'm traveling um i'm in a, a fresh relationship so i'm enjoying that so i have a friend that just got married just had her first child is you know doing that big girl stuff i'm calling it big girl stuff just because it is mm -hmm. and i was very scared i'm not even gonna lie of how our friendship was going to change i'm like oh my gosh like i'm in this era of my life she's approaching a different one like what are we gonna talk about like what are we gonna have in common like and that was a good friend of mine so i'm like oh my gosh like we're not even gonna be friends anymore because what are we gonna have to talk about mm -hmm. like that was i never voiced it to her but i was just like oh my gosh like our friendship is gonna just like trickle down into nothing <laughs> and I'm just, but you know that's how i'm thinking and then she had her baby and i was just like oh we're fine like texting like hey i hope your delivery went well when mm -hmm. the baby home it's like oh my gosh like whenever you're open to visitors mm -hmm. everybody's sending me photos like, hey how are you like besides the baby how are you doing mm -hmm. Made that relationship and i'm just like oh this is what adults do i can do this like okay so that's something that i had to navigate and it's, it's fine so to all the young girls out there that are you know transitioning from being like a teen and getting into like your young adult friendship you're gonna figure it out yeah so you're gonna figure it out <laughs> and two don't be afraid to walk through your friends because your 20s the 20s can look different I've, i had friends who by 25 they were pregnant and married you know, I have friends who 25, I think when I, when I was 25, I was in a relationship, but I was still outside, like you are outside in a relationship, traveling, working, you know. Um, don't be afraid to be there for your friends in a different way. So one of my good girlfriends, she's my, she's family. We've been friends since we were like 13 years old. So we've known each other, like that's my family. We don't, we're family. And, you know, she had children. She had her son when he, we were in our 20s. And you know what? I knew she couldn't come out. So who, guess who would go over? I would come over. I'm like, girl, I'm coming over. I'm bringing the wine. Or she, we, had this, we had this routine. Like, we would get wine and um, chicken from the chicken spot. <laughs> we would get wine, chicken from the chicken spot, and fries. And we, I would come over, and we would literally break the day. And we would get some talking and catching up and I know that meant so much to me because I'll be like what you doing tonight she'll be like I don't know I don't have a family like, girl sit down I'm coming over like you know and that season brought us together because I know she may have felt like I'm a mom some of my friends aren't I'm like girl I'm coming over so don't be afraid to like find other ways like maybe y'all not going out to the brunch into the lunches into the dinners but maybe you can be the friend to come over and still have a time, you know, we would always kick it on a stoop, you know, that's how, that's, that's an old Brooklyn thing, and, you know, we would, and, and, and you, you just make the most out of those seasons, so that's really important, too, to just, like, be there for your friends in new ways, um, as they evolve, and they change, um, and they grow, you know, even if they're studying, I've had friends who, friends who were doctors, like be the understand who were studying for like their MCATs or their LSATs. Like if your friend is trying to further their career and they can't come because they're studying, because they're trying to change careers, like be supportive. Like, all right, girl, you can't come this time. I'll see you next time. I have a, a, a good, a well, family. 
And over the summer, I was inviting him everywhere. He was like, cuz, I'm studying, I'm studying, I'm studying. And I was like, all right, see you next time. Like, there's no reason to get, like, offended when someone can't be there because whatever life changes they're going through in their life. Mm -hmm. So what advice do you have for our younger audience that are seeking quality friendships? You have to first know what are your values. Like, I think you got to start with you. Um, what are your top five to seven, even 10 values? And look for people who share those values and build relationships with that. Um, so know your values and your values are really what means mo most to you. Like, you know, you know, you may not be able to tolerate a friend who may not share some of the same values as you. Um, if that's important to you, then make sure that you have people that share your same values. Um, and, the, and, and if you want to know what you value, see how you spend your time and money, that's normally an indicator. Um, <laughs> and we also have to do this wonderful exercise in the program with this top list of values. Because if you just Google like a list of values and find out what those values, what those values are that you adhere to and who you want people around you to share those type of values. Um, pay attention. So when people show you who they are, pay attention attention to how you feel when you're around someone when you are in their presence were they draining were you motivated you know when you walked away from somebody did you feel a little icky that's normally your gut instinct talking to you so pay attention to that and trust that feeling not being um uh, how can i say overly cautious or you know uh, like paranoid but definitely Pay attention to how you feel. Uh, pay attention to how they treat other people. Pay attention to how they treat people they call their friends. Like I said, if they're talking smack about their best friend, then they're going to talk smack to you, right? Talk, talk smack about you. Um, you know, don't be somebody who's dumping all your stuff on one person. That's not fair. Um, that's why, you know, you have your relationship with God and then therapy, <laughs> like, you know, so I think like friends have a certain faith, but you shouldn't be, don't be that friend that's like needy and codependent that you need to tell your best friend everything and y'all got to do everything together. Like be okay to walk, like, you know, like, you know, and I'm saying like, be, be, learn how to be in good relationship with yourself. And then you can learn how to be in good relationship with other people and be understanding that it's not fair to your friends around you to always be dumping you. Like you said, Isis, you're the therapist of the group and I get that too. Like, that's not fair to the strong friend. <laughs> like, you know, so sometimes be like, nah, I got this or, you know, I don't have to, you know, be just be mindful of what you're sharing at what point. And then don't be selfish. Like be yourself, be think about other people and one of their needs. I was on the on the front on the phone with my one of my friends earlier. And he swears I'm nosy. I'm like, no, I'm just a good friend. He's like, why are you so nosy? I'm like, because I ask good questions because I want to know because that makes me a better friend. If I know what you like, what you don't like. Like one of my good girlfriends, when she comes over, she is a tea drinker. So guess who makes sure every time she's coming to spend a couple of days with me, I call her, I'm like, girl, well, how much tea you want? You know, cause she's going to come, she's going to drink my house out of tea. So be somebody who's like thoughtful and pay attention to what your friends like, what they don't like, and be like, you know, be somebody that's there for them and love them the way they want to be loved, not the way you do. Like, because your love language may be words of affirmation and their love language may be gifts. You treat them the way they want to be treated because a lot of times we'd be like but i would and i want it's not about you <laughs> you know if for their birthday they want to go bungee jumping then go but well i'm not going bungee jumping though any of my friends ask me to go bungee jumping but let me tell you what i will do i'll be at that bottom supporting you girl <laughs> I will take your picture for you. But I'm saying if, if it's their birthday and they don't want a surprise party, don't throw them a surprise party. If they're there, if it's their birthday, like I said, they want to go bungee jumping. It may not, it's not in my wheelhouse. We're like, girl, I'm not gonna go, but guess who's gonna support? I'm gonna be right there at the bottom with you. Um, so things like that. So just be mindful of other people's interests. So see how you can be a good friend. And I promise you, it'll be reciprocated. And uh, another thing, don't let people take advantage of you at that point either. Like if somebody's always using you for your phone or 
I'm missing for your phone for your money. I'm sorry, I said for your phone. I'm like, I don't know, want your Wi-Fi pass. So I don't know, but you know when you're being used. So be mindful of not letting people use you and step over you and then you know, you know, use your voice. What about you? Um, for me, for the younger girls, I would say definitely pay attention to how you feel when you hang around people and how they make you feel, how they treat others important. More so I always like to say this. It's not true in all situations, but you are who you hang around. So it's like making sure that the company that you keep is the good type of company. Like if you have certain values or just certain things that you like to do and certain ways that you like to operate and you feel like the person that you're friends with may not operate that exact same way because you know we're all different. But it doesn't really align with what you usually like to go for, then maybe that's a sign, okay, they're not good for me. Might be different, you know, for sure. Um, as a young girl, what did I want to hear when I was young? When I was younger, would I really wanted somebody to tell me that it's okay to be different? Like, I feel like when I'm looking for a friend, I'm looking for someone exactly like me, and there's nothing wrong with that, but it's okay to embrace everybody's differences and you're they're not gonna be the exact same person that you are mm -hmm. and you need to love them for exactly who they are if you want them to be in your circle oh. because i will say that all of my friends have taught me something because we are different so i will say when you're seeking out friendships so you don't always have to gravitate towards people that are exactly mm -hmm. like you. just make sure that they check off your box you know what i mean but i agree with everything you said to be honest you this is good come on friendships <laughs> well to go back to what i said you know how people say like oh don't you wish you could be your own friend mm. would you want to be friends with somebody that was exactly like you no <laughs> everyone is different right so and you know there's only one me so okay nobody can be this fabulous i'm just not <laughs> i'm just playing around but um it's great having different perspectives like i have a really really good friend and we share similar we share very similar values but then we'll have different perspectives and she can kind of like talk me off i don't want to talk me off the ledge per se i remember one time let me tell you i am very cool until i'm not and what god has gifted me with good i know how to the same way i can encourage and build oh baby I can use my words to slice and dice without using one curse word. And one time I will never forget, I with my thumbs were getting to go because someone had said something to me that I did not like. And I was like, oh, I didn't told you one last time. And I was like, da, da, da. and she called me and I was telling, are you still there? Because you went out. Oh, okay. Okay. Right, right. So um, she called me and she was just, I was telling her the situation. She said, Maria, is this the hill you want to die on? And I knew what she meant. She was like, girl, is it worth it? And I was like, <laughs> because, like, you know, because if I had a friend who was just like me, would have said, send that text. You get what I'm saying? So I think that's what, that's what I mean by it's important to have someone who shares um, different values and different not different values, but has a different perspective. And tell me you are still there because it says you went out. I don't know if you're there. Okay. Are you? Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know why it keeps doing that because my notifications are off. Okay. But I agree with you. And don't, mm -mm, don't let them feelings get the best of you. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. don't do it. Mm-mm, mm-mm, because I know I could be mean. God has saved and delivered me, honey, but I know <laughs> that I can be mean, you know? So I'm like, all right, let me not be mean. So, yeah, so that's what I mean. I think it's good to have people, because she knew my values, mm -hmm. and she was just like, you know that, you don't want to do that. And I was like, so I think it's important to have people to have a different perspective. What about you? Would you want to be your own friend? Do you want friends who are exactly like you? I love me, but there's only one me, and I feel like if I need a friend, I'll go in the mirror and talk to myself. <laughs> but no, I genuinely enjoy having different people around me. You know what they say, opposites oh. attract. Mm -hmm. And all of my friends are very, very different from me. We all have, you know, little similarities, but 
they keep me grounded because they can teach me things and they have different perspectives that I wouldn't have. I'm just like, you know what? If I didn't have you around, I would just be going based off of my own brain. And you're like, I needed this outside perspective. So I love me. I think I'm a good friend, but I feel like I would get on my own nerves. <laughs> just okay. because, you know, you know, but no, I love having different types of friends and I feel like one is enough. <laughs> One is enough. And we can never be duplicated, girl. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I do have a question. And this is one, mm, I don't know, people might feel a little bit different. How do you feel when your friend is getting inspired by you? Or like, how do you feel when they get inspired versus competition? Like, how can you tell the difference? Girl, you know the difference. It's like, I don't care what nobody, you know in your gut she stole your idea. Mm-hmm. You know in your gut, you know, she stole, you said you was going to get that dress from Fashion Nova and she went and bought it. Like, you yeah. know. Or mm-hmm. you're copying your social media aesthetic or your business idea. You know. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know. There's a difference. Like, so my one of my good, like, there's a difference between being inspired is like encouraging. So, um, Last year, I, internet do not come for me, but I just learned about Jackie Ina last year. Don't come for me, internet. I know, I know, I know, I know. It was just last year around the holidays, actually. And my good girlfriend, she followed, she put me on, she was like, yo, you will love Jackie Ina, da 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 da, right? So then Jackie Ina, I think, has towel warmers or something like that. Mm-hmm. So my girlfriend was telling me, yeah, girl, I got towel warmers. I was like, you do? And I was like, oh, that inspired me. I was like, oh, I'm going to get towel warmers too, you know? Because Jackie Ina, you know, she be out here that, thinking oh, that we live. That's my girl. That we could. That we live in five five star luxury hotels and I, you know, apartments out here. So that's a, that's a difference. Like I was like, oh girl, she was like, yeah, she got me getting into. She's, let me and she was like, let me send you where where I got mine from. Like like that's being inspired. Like so I was like, okay, cool, I could get it to Tower Woman too. Or if I go to your house, I'm like, oh, that's nice. Where do you get that from? She's like, oh girl, I got it from here. Yeah, get it, pop up. Like you know what I'm saying? That's being inspired. Mm-hmm. The other thing is being in competition is like, I go to your house. I see your exact decor and I go copy it in my house like that's competition that's stealing you know like so I think you know the difference with like hey girl let me put you on or let's sharing good ideas when someone is just in competition with you and then backhanded jokes like I don't, I don't care what nobody says jokes when you start backhanding jokes that is like you trying to act like you're joking but you know you're really trying to play me on the low that's something that somebody who's may have an issue with you so you know i feel like you know it in your gut if, you, if that person starts making bad kind of comments like oh she thinks she will let or blah 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 yeah that's not your yeah, idea that, that might be an issue um jealousy if somebody is not happy for you let's say you call you get a job or you get accepted to a school and it's like oh they didn't call me back what happened like that's a problem um they might be someone who's in competition with you talks behind your back um steals your ideas wants your man like Mm -hmm. you know these type of things like one thing oprah said that i always that resonated with me she says she's not friends with people who want her life and i thought that's very powerful i think like while it may not it, it may not be applicable to all situations i understood that she was saying like She's like, I can't have you be my friend if you want my life because people will do anything when it comes to jealousy and things like Mm -hmm. that. Um, So I think it's important to just be mindful of respectful of each other. Y'all both can have same type of goals and ambitions, but when it starts to get competition and you know it in your gut and you see it and they're backhanding comments to you, they're not celebrating you, you know, yeah. And if you're that person, that when you see your friend winning, you feel that jealousy in your gut. You gotta, you gotta find out why that's there. That's some work you gotta do. <laughs> you know, we can't fix that on this live, but that's just, mm-hmm. just your sign. Mm-hmm. You got some, that you got some work to do. Are you there? But okay. <laughs> I was gonna say, like, I agree. That's some inner work that you gotta do. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, I get inspired by my friends 
this all the time. I'm like, oh, girl, that is cute. Where'd you get that uh-huh. from? Like, And we'll send each other the link. And I feel like something that I've encountered, not with my own personal friendships, but just like, you know, outside looking into other ones, uh-huh. but let's say you ask me like, oh, hey, Isis, you, you have this cute top. Like, where'd you get it? Or like something similar. And I'm like, oh, I forgot. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. Blah, blah, blah. like stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't like that. Or be like, oh, my gosh, like, where did you get this towel warmer? It's just like, oh, when I find a link, I'm going to send it Ooh, to you. And it's like, never yes. do. it's like you're doing it on purpose because like you can't fathom that somebody wants something or uh, similar to you mm-hmm. or you're like oh no they can't be like me like this is one of a kind like girl everybody not everybody but some people have a towel woman they can she could have one too or this top she could buy it to right, right. fashion right. over made it for everybody so it's like stuff like that i genuinely don't like mm-hmm. and i feel mm-hmm. like you can tell for sure you can tell when someone's inspired versus when there's competition and i feel like jealousy really does break up a lot of friendships and women more mm-hmm. so because it gets very catty it mm-hmm. gets super super catty that's what it's like you gotta be you gotta set boundaries in these friendships and you gotta make sure that people don't cross them so 100 i'm gonna insert something here and this mm-hmm. is mine because like um guys you don't know we kind of we have questions we prepare we don't just come on these lives right but this is not even a topic it's not something we're going to address as far as boundaries Boundaries and jealousy and women, things breaking up with friendships. Be very mindful about what you tell your friends about what's going on in your relationships. That you have to be mindful of that because a, I hate to say it because I'm not the one. I have a whole career based around uplifting women and girls. So women, that whole women get jealous. That's not my, that's not my MO. I don't, you know, but I know, unfortunately, it is common and to your point and what made me say is because a woman get jealous of life be Mm -hmm. careful over what you telling your girlfriends about what's going on in your relationships good or bad you know because sometimes if you only telling them the bad what happens is you put your partner in a bad light with your friends and now your friends don't like your partner or if you're telling them the good sometimes they can get so jealous of you because everything is going good with your partner you know what i'm saying and they may try to come for that situation and or try to sabotage it whichever way because they're jealous of you and they don't want to see you happy or they want you all to themselves so just be mindful of of just exactly how how intimate you get with your girlfriends about what's going on with you and your man you and your partner because and then a lot of times you know what goes on between you and your your boo should a lot of times stay between y'all too but just be mindful of that that was just something i want to go i wanted to throw out there mm-hmm. yeah. and if you know oh, okay. I, well, oh, not my fault, <laughs> don't worry if you have one of them like jealous type friends then don't tell them the business they shouldn't be your friends in the first place mm-hmm. but that was just my two cents <laughs> A hundred percent since you're already like kind of getting into it Mm -hmm. what type of boundaries do you feel like you should set when you're creating friendships i think this goes this is different for everybody because everybody has their own but i did everybody should know their 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 categories of boundaries so i think that you should know that there's emotional boundaries intellectual boundaries physical boundaries, financial boundaries, there can even be like faith-based spiritual boundaries. You know that those are the boundaries that you should have in your life, right? So if it's financial boundaries, maybe you all have the boundary of like, well, I don't let my friends borrow money that I know I can't afford to lose. Or if it's an emotional boundary, like I don't have friends who go and spread, you know, who I can't feel emotionally safe and secure around, whatever it is, I think, The boundaries that you set in friendships is definitely case by case scenario, but you should at least know those categories. What about you? What boundaries did you set in your friendships? In my friendships? Definitely don't spread my business. Like if I'm confiding in you, then it's for your ears. And if I wanted to tell other people, I definitely would. Mm -hmm. Um, For me, I want my homegirl to feel like this is a safe space and all aspects of her life like whether you're telling me that you oh my gosh girl just got (laughs) chick-fil-a or you're telling me something that completely detrimental that happens to you like i want it to be a safe space for everything so i feel like that's something that i want to build in my relationship that's like a non-negotiable like girl why we if you want to be my friend not my home girl but you want to be my friend then those are things that i feel like we should be able to talk about 
of course there's things that are off limits but mm -hmm. you know you establish that within those boundaries mm -hmm. um same thing like like th i know what my religion is and i know that there are some people that don't believe in anything mm -hmm. and like I've had a friend like that and I was like, you know what? I feel like when I speak about certain things in regards to God, mm. they don't accept it. And mm -hmm. it's okay because that's not what they believe in, but I'm like, you know what? Maybe this is not a good connection mm -hmm. for me. Right. And that might be hard and it's a tough conversation, but if that's something that's important to you, then you know, stick to that. And just overall going back into like the qualities, if they don't fit the qualities of a friend, then they're definitely not going to respect the boundaries that you set for a friendship. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's just something to know. Good, good. Mm -hmm. I like it. I love that. <laughs> you have mentioned this before, and, you know, we you said we was going to go back to it. How do you feel about women that put their relationships before their friendships or over their friendships? And do you feel like it's justifiable or is it like a red flag? It's justifiable to a certain extent mm -hmm. right especially depending what age group we talking at 21 i know it may seem like the world's over because your friend is picking her man or her boo over you it's not um i don't think you should completely abandon your friends at all when you find a new boo absolutely not but when love is new it's new you know when you get the, when you get those first like it's new it's refreshing you're smiling and i feel like as a good friend your friend should want you to be happy mm -hmm. and enjoy yourself right so that's what i mean it's justifiable to a certain extent like my girlfriends my friends they find love i'm like you and if their their boo call set i'm like you better go like sometimes you'd be like damn they're leaving me early but it's like let them go for the night you know um so i think so to, to to just to make it work um schedule be intentional about scheduling time with your friends it is just you and you it's girls night it's ladies night it's whatever like this is the night for me and my friend um so you can make time to hang out with your friends ahead of time as we get older hanging out your friends gets more few Fewer and far between because we got lives, right? When we were 16, I could be on the phone with my homegirl till 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. Now, if she calls me at 2 o'clock in the morning, I'm like, what happened? Like, it's an emergency. Like, I'm sleeping. <laughs> You're like, what happened? I'm thinking something is wrong when my friends call me. Well, oh, they're about to get into some shenanigans. When my friends are about to get into some shenanigans in the midnight hour, they text me. So if I get a call, I'm going to immediately think something is wrong. Something mm -hmm. happened. So I say that to say, um, you know, you don't you don't spend as much time with your friends when you as you do when you're young with your older. So to your point, I would say as y'all start developing your own friendships, relationships, serious relationships, marriages, partnerships, all that type of thing, be intentional about scheduling time with your girlfriends. So yeah, and do it ahead of time. So you like, all right, two weeks next Saturday, we're gonna go to brunch. All right, cool. You know, copy. Be there for the May for the birthdays, the the major events, um, things like that. And if you're and to be a good friend, be understanding that when your friend is in a relationship, you should want to see your her your friend be happy. Don't be a bit of Betty. Mm -hmm. Don't be a negative Nancy and a hating Harriet. I don't even know who a hating Harriet is, but I put her down too. Oh um, <laughs> that you don't want to see your friends happy, so you're you're you know you're blocking how you cut blocking <laughs> relationships. Um as well so i think it's important to just want to see your friends happy and being okay with that and then to being intentional about putting time on each other's calendars to have those good quality time mm -hmm. what about you especially uh, you because you just got in the relationship so i want to hear what you still got to say i'm not even gonna lie when my man pull his phone i'm going i can't like i'm in that puppy dog stage so it's like yeah i want to go it's yeah. like everything's fresh it's new i've been in relationships before but it doesn't feel like this one so it's like we're experiencing these new feelings together so it's like yeah i want to go and at first my friends know me they know i have high expectations all these this long sheet this long rap sheet so they're like at first they were like you know what i mean like hold on and they were so used to me like hop skipping and stepping with them mm -hmm. so it became like a whoa like okay like you're gonna 
and go out. And it wasn't like a, oh, we're upset with you. It was more so like, oh, we're not used to this. Mm -hmm. So I could definitely understand where that dynamic might change. Mm -hmm. But it shouldn't be something that's a red flag unless it's like, I'm, we're at my birthday dinner and your man says, let's go. And you're like, yeah, we're leaving. Mm -hmm. You know, it depends on the circumstances. But I feel like your friends should understand like, all right, friendship are one thing but a romantic partner that you are trying to like build with is another thing so yes there are going to be times where she's going to have to head out i get it it's happened to me like, like i told you my friend has a husband all oh, my husband's calling he mean me i'm gonna see you girl all right my husband's calling. Like, and that's okay so i feel like it isn't a red flag unless it's something that personally crosses a boundary for you but for me i don't care your man calling girl i'm gonna see you later yeah we'll schedule something in a week or two exactly. it's fine exactly and be okay with that and then to mm -hmm. be the friend because sometimes the the, the partner the guy can sense when you're the hating friend right mm -hmm. don't be that hating friend like be cool with him like i remember one time <laughs> One of my girlfriends, she's so silly. Um, she was like asking, she was like, can Maria come out tonight? <laughs> she was like, can Maria come out and play with us tonight? We, I'm only in town for the weekend and I really want to see it. And he was like, of course. Like, you know, but he thought it was so endearing that she did that. Like, she's like, yo, your own girl really didn't have to do that. Like, you know, I don't have you under my thumb. I was like, that's just her being courteous. So she just, is, she's acknowledging that, you know, this person, in my life has come it's coming first to a certain degree right now mm -hmm. you probably gonna go out anyway but it was cute so like that's just a, a no like be be cool with your, your 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 girl's partner some of them you might not be cool with all of them you might not like all, all of them that's something but, that you can't help but respect but, them but and, respect them exactly unless they're doing something to like physically or you know harm your friend or you mm -hmm. know doing some things that are out of pocket for the most part you know just try to be cool and respectable and you mm -hmm. know they'll reciprocate it too and to the point that he might be like nah like it's Tisha it's come on go out with Tisha tonight like you you've been with me the last three weekends like you being you not being a good friend so that's and, and, true yeah, yeah man will, will tell you yeah and he will oh my they tell, oh, I don't like her <laughs> like oh I like her yeah. he will tell or they'll be like, like that's not your friend watch yeah. Oh my God! I've gone. Oh yeah, that's not your friend. Watch her. And I've done it for them. Too. I'm like, oh, he's not your friend. Watch him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like you know. So you want to make sure that you you. What I'm saying is incorporate your boo with your friends, mm -hmm. and so that everybody can be cool and everybody got each other's you know phone number just in case an emergency happen or if they want to mm -hmm. surprise you, you know. So for your birthday or something, it's really nice for me. It means a lot to see my man and my friends get along well mm -hmm. but you don't want to be the hating friend because mm -hmm. then he's not inviting you to her her surprise birthday dinner. Yeah. <laughs> mm -mm. and when they having something at the house they're like mm, you gotta invite that one mm -hmm. uh -huh. Uh -huh. and trust me he got her ear so mm -hmm. if you causing the root of the friend that always causing drama trust and believe you're not gonna make the invite list to the events and you don't want to do that because you want to be able again to rock with your friend through thick and thin mm -hmm. so i have a question we talked about this the last time like basically do you have to teach a man to be your man mm. should you have to teach someone to be your friend i think at this age i don't have a capacity <laughs> like i'm a big in my big old age no you should know how to be somebody's friend maybe when you're younger mm -hmm. so i know a lot, a lot of audience is younger and what i mean by teach you show to you you show people how to treat you yes but you know choose friends so you don't have to do all of that this is not a curriculum like you get what i'm saying to a certain degree it's like as you build you know i was actually chilling with one of my good girlfriends and i did she told me something she was like well i don't like when people call me such and such i didn't know that about her and i was like oh that's interesting so essentially she was letting me in on something as a boundary of hers right so i guess she was teaching me how to be a friend so situations like that cool right um but for the most part like or cultural differences that might be something you have to teach people right that's definitely something i've been called out on certain maybe a word i've used and it's like well no that word is kind of like disrespectful in our culture and you think it's not so those type of things yes maybe cultural religious differences yes nuances that someone may not understand is like girl when you come to my house we go to my mother's house make sure you take off your shoes yeah stuff like that yeah but for the most part like 
it shouldn't have to be work. It's just so effortless mm -hmm. um, to me um, on how to treat me as friends. Now, I mean, if you do something out of pocket, out of line, I may have to call you out on it. But the, I think that goes back to reinforcing boundaries. Um, what do you think? Do you think you, you should teach somebody how to be your friend? I feel like in to a certain extent, you have to teach people how to work with you or be with you, whatever the case may be. Because when someone meets you, they don't know you. So naturally, once they get to know you, they're learning about you. So that's the way that you teach mm -hmm. them. Now, what they do with that information is on them. Mm -hmm. And I feel like even at my age, you should know how to be a friend because you know how you would want to be treated mm -hmm. as a friend. So mm -hmm. I feel like that should fuel your fire, at least when you're mm -hmm. trying to seek a quality relationship. So I really don't have the time to sit up here and be like, oh, you you can't talk to me like that because I don't like it. Or, mm -hmm. You shouldn't be spreading my business because that's not what you should. Like, I don't want to have to, like, do that. I feel like just certain things that people should know. Just be by being a quality human being, and yeah. that will just trickle down into the friendship. So if I feel like it's like, okay, I feel like I'm parenting this person, and I have yeah. to tell them every other day, like, please don't do this to me because I don't like it, or this is what I would appreciate out of a friendship, then it's just like, no. I feel like friendship should just come naturally. It should just flow right. the same way that you would with like a romantic partner. It should just happen, you know. Mm -hmm. I'll agree, one hundred percent. Are you there? Yeah. Can you hear oh, me? Are you lagging a little bit? But I can hear you. Um, I don't know why my phone was ringing, and I don't know what why. But go ahead. <laughs> it's okay. We're down to our last question. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, do you feel like that we should give our friends grace for their mistakes? Because, you know, we're humans, it happens. Mm -hmm. Or should we cut them off the second that they do something that we don't like? I always believe in grace for sure, right? But mm -hmm. it depends on the level of the mistake, right? Like, if you do something, let's say somebody, like, steals 50000 out your bank account. I don't know. I'm going to forgive you because the forgiveness is for myself. But I'm not, I don't have to be friends with you anymore right um or if it's something like it could be something like i don't know maybe they said something to you that you didn't like maybe you give them grace and you show them how you want to be treat them um you know how you how you want to be treated and you have a conversation with them about it um but you also have to understand what capacity you have and what you're willing to and not willing to tolerate um, but I definitely believe in grace, not cutting people off if they're fr like their first, you know, minute mistake. However, if it's something that's major, like I said, they stole from you, maybe they were physically, uh, harmful to you. Maybe they slept with your boo. I don't know. Like certain things like that. I'm, you're not coming back <laughs> after that, or they lied on you or about you. Um, for me, those are no-nos, those are deal breakers. Um, but if it's something that it's like I said, a little, little bit more minute and you feel like you can work through, then work through it. And then also don't be afraid to put space. I was talking to someone recently and she was telling me about a fallout she had with someone and she was just like, yeah, me and that person are reconnecting again, but it won't be the same. And that's mm -hmm. okay too. Like you may reconnect with someone and your level of intimacy with that person may not be the same. And people have to understand that. Mm -hmm. Just because you boo cool cool 15, 20, 10, 5, maybe even last year, and you know, there has been some sort of distance or whatever in a relationship, some sort of um fracture to the relationship, it is not gonna be the same. And you have to be okay with that and try stop try and not try to force a season that's passed like you know what we was that tight that you know last year five years ago but unfortunately we're not anymore mm -hmm. and you have to be okay with that what about you do you feel in grace um for the mistakes or cutting people off as soon as um as soon as they you know faux pas <laughs> honestly you taught me about grace because i wasn't i wasn't out here giving people grace so I feel like my first initial reaction, I'm upset. So it's just like, I won't cut you off, but it's like give me my space to like really wrap my head around the situation. For me, definitely lying. Because it's just like, why do you feel like you need to lie to me? Um, just sleeping with my partner. <laughs> Girl, we're not coming back from that. 
Um, I feel like disrespect because I feel like we're from New York, so some things might say one thing, but it might come across as another. Like, hold on, girl, what you meant by that? If I get a little disrespect back, hold on. So stuff like that, I could definitely um give people grace for because it, it happens. But I feel like there's boundaries, and it's like if you feel like you can disrespect me in this way, mm-hmm. it's like uh uh-uh, uh we we can't come back from that because I don't. That's one thing I don't do. Uh uh-uh, mm-hmm. I can't get jiggy with that. Um. I don't know. I feel like it really does go down to like the severity of the situation. And if you can give them grace enough to treat them normally, of course, the dynamic will change. But are you still able to respect them? Can you still, you know, ha kiki with them? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Or do they turn from like a friend to just like a homegirl? Mm-hmm. So it really just, it does depend. I will say now my 15 year old 16 year old self would not even think about giving anybody grace mm-hmm. but now as an adult i'm like you know what people do make mistakes and they do deserve a second mm-hmm. chance but only if they can prove that they actually want the spot true of being a friend a friend with me so that's important too but great yeah I agree. And if somebody keeps showing you the same and you let them back in and they do the same thing or do something else to, you know, undermine you, to disrespect you, to take you off, like, don't be afraid. To they like to you. see you sweat, girl. And they gotta go. You know what I'm saying? Like, listen, and, and, the old, and I know that's difficult at, when you're young because when you're young, your peer group and your friend group are really they really um hold a very significant amount of weight in your social life. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is why I'm like, listen, try to di- have diversify your friends, right? Um, and have different friends that you can. I have different friends for different things. Or mm-hmm. friends. I know when it comes to business and entrepreneur stuff, I know who my friends and career stuff. I know who who to call. Mm-hmm. They, they they know who they are, and I know who they are. Um, there's friends when it's faith based spiritual things. I know who you know, and those are very. I only have about two, <laughs> um, and that's okay. Like, that's another thing quality over quantity as you go grow older. Mm-hmm. I, do not, I do not, anybody who says they have 38 friends, I'm looking at them I don't like, believe you. I don't believe you. You may have 38 associates, homegirls, homeboys, but I don't have 38 friends. So I'm okay with And I'm okay with that. So I have my, my friends that I know I could talk business, entrepreneur stuff, career stuff. I have my friends I can talk faith, you know, Christ-based stuff with. I have my friends that, you know, I can talk relationship stuff with, marriage stuff because they've been married, you know, back and forth, up, down, you know, divorce, remarried, whatever. So I feel like they may have a different perspective so you also got to know who you can see you you may be able to talk to the friend the, the one friend is gives great relationship advice that may be your friends for relationship type of advice and there may be another friend for like financial advice they may not be the same person and that's okay too that is very very important but what i have seen is a, it's still on topic mm-hmm. making pe- like your friends feel like i don't how do you say like like favoritism like mm-hmm. making your friends see like that you have like a favorite friend uh, or like making it seem as if like oh like how you have like a business uh-huh. friend and a faith friend but making it seem like they're like pinned up against one another uh-huh. like, for your friendship like don't uh-huh. do that like, you can have multiple friends but still make them feel like they matter and that yeah. they're important because they they do yeah. but it's just like don't make it seem like one matters more than the other you know what i mean absolutely Absolutely, I agree. We kind of end on a better note than mm-hmm. that, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know. Sometimes it's okay to have different friend groups for different reasons. Mm-hmm. All right, mm-hmm. that was we, good. That was good. I've never talked about friendship on uh, a live before. That was really good. I hope y'all got something from me. Neither. I've never talked about it in a live in a podcast on a stage. This is my first time ever really delving into. Uh, I think I've taught it. I've taught building relationships in the academy, but I've mm-hmm. never talked about my relationships of, you know, building my, my friendships mm-hmm. per se, you know, building friends or friend or friend of me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is good. It was. Well, thank you for sharing. Mm-hmm. I hope you all out there enjoyed. Um, remember that we're having this deal going on for now, seven days for the Patreon page. So make sure that you get on top of that. Mm-hmm. And that's it. That's pretty much it.
If you're watching on our YouTube, make sure to subscribe. Oh, we got something coming next week. 12 mm -hmm. days of Embrace Our Legacy. That's going to be really be dope. We're going to be counting down the top moments of 2023. So make sure you're following us on Instagram and subscribe to YouTube so we can see us countdown. You know, it's going to be like TRL, like back in 2001. Like we're going to do top 12 <laughs> countdown, uh, 106 and Park type vibes, uh, counting down and highlighting every day. We'll highlight a different moment. And the point is to really galvanize support for Giving Tuesday. If you don't know, Embrace a Legacy is a 501c3 nonprofit. So Giving Tuesday is the global day of generosity for you to support your favorite nonprofit profit organizations like Embrace a Legacy and make sure that you're making impact and giving back this holiday season. So we'll definitely let you know how you can support us by making a great gift and donating towards our mission. But that's pretty much it. Anything else, Isis? Mm, no. If you guys have any suggestions for our next live, our DMs are open. Yeah. You can always comment on any of our posts and we will see you soon. Got it. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night. Bye. Bye.